In today's video, we're going to be looking into Casper Coin's transition to the Rust coding language and why it's going to be beneficial to Casper Coin. If you enjoy this video, then hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. So a bit of backstory on Casper. It's a cryptocurrency which is proof of work, which means it can be mined using a GPU. It is aiming to be the fastest, open source, decentralized and fully scalable layer 1 cryptocurrency. This means that it doesn't require another layer to improve the coin. For example, Bitcoin has a layer 2 on top of it called the Lightning Network, which improves the network to help with transactions. So Casper is compiling all of this into one cryptocurrency so that they don't have to rely on multiple blockchains to work. Instead of using a standard blockchain to record transactions, Casper uses a block DAG system, which helps to have a higher transaction time and confirmations on the network. If you want to learn more about the block DAG, I've got two videos which explain them in detail. I'll leave a link for them in the description for those two videos. Currently, Casper coin is written in the Golang programming language. This has served well for Casper so far, as they have already had high speeds on their network. However, Golang serves the purpose of designing and proving concept. So after the Casper coin had proved their concept on this Golang, they decided to switch the coding language over to Rust. Rust is more of a high performance program language, which many cryptocurrencies use right now. It allows for more race ready concepts, which fully utilize computing hardware for the network. For example, Rust allows for the ability to process different blocks on different CPU threads simultaneously, which is very good for adding speed to a network. When looking on the Casper coin website, we can see it's still in development, but I believe that they have already started testing. The person who is putting this change into action is called Michael Sutton, who worked over at Casper coin. In a tweet in September of 2022, he said that this is an update. We are nearly done with implementing consensus block validation. Once completed, we could start cranking up the TPS and the BPS to get a first idea of how fast Casper can go. Initial modest goals are four BPS, implying four times TPS as well. For those who might not understand, BPS means block per second and TPS is transactions per second. To give you an idea of how much change this will improve Casper, we have to look at the TPS and BPS of the coin right now. Currently, the coin operates at one block per second which supports around 200 transactions per second. So Michael's tweet says that it's going to test for around four blocks per second, which would equate to 800 transactions per second. This isn't anything unheard of in the crypto space, but after some time, Casper released a blog post, which actually stated their real estimates for this after testing. As we can see here, it talks about the max BPS and TPS for the network when it switches over to Rust. It says, given the above concrete numbers, I believe a goal of 32 BPS is definitely possible and even 100 BPS is a reasonable target. Within our current block size, this would translate to 6,400 to 20,000 transactions per second. But block size can also theoretically be increased to find a sustainable amount of TPS, where the only limiting factor is the internet connection itself. So they clearly did some testing and looked at the numbers when compared to the tweet from Michael that talked about the 4 BPS and now that's gone up to 32 BPS on the low end and then 100 BPS on the high end. As it says, the estimates allow for 64 to 20,000 transactions per second. Now to get a grasp on that, we need to actually compare it to other cryptocurrencies and other financial transaction institutions to see how it marks up against these. One of the big leaders in the space for TPS is Solana which have said that their network can handle up to 65,000 transactions per second. That's a lot more than Casper's projection. However, Solana has a lot of problems such as staking, which causes massive centralization of these coins. This means it's not really spreading out the network equally. The next problem is that the Solana network has had major outages, which lead to transactions not going through because the network can't handle certain peak times. Rarely will we ever see 65,000 transactions per second achieved on Solana. I like Solana, but they do have some problems which could stop it in the future. So Casper doesn't compare on the transactions per second level, but they are way more decentralized and way more secure. Then on the other hand, we have Visa and MasterCard, which facilitate transactions. Now there is a myth out there that Visa can handle 24,000 transactions per second, which isn't exactly true and the figures have kind of been over exaggerated. In reality, Visa processes around 1,700 transactions per second, a figure that has been rarely exceeded over the past couple of years. So therefore, Casper can actually outcompete Visa with a block rate of around 10 blocks per second, 
which isn't out of the realm of possibility based on their estimates that they have been given. We have another tweet from Michael here which shows the benchmarks for Casper on Rust. This graph shows a green and red line. The green line relates to blocks processed against blocks per second. And then the red line indicates a region in the graph, which we can actually see here in light red. This region is where the blocks processed is smaller than the blocks produced. This is how they will decide the block number for the first iteration of the Rust rewrite. So in theory, all these block times can be achieved without making the network unstable up to this red line. But the closer you get to the red line and green line touching, the more unstable the network could get. If we take that into account, we could definitely see 10 blocks per second safely and 20 blocks per second safely. Now, they aren't just going to go straight for those numbers. Michael said it in this tweet thread that they will gradually increase the blocks per second to prevent unexpected catastrophes. We have actually seen some simulations of this as you can run Rusty Casper if you have the right equipment. Here we have a video where they actually simulated Casper on Rust. They had a delay of two and a blocks per second of eight. As you can see, he's input these numbers down here. After letting this program run, the simulation generated 1000 blocks with everyone being validated. This led to a transaction amount of 775,715 transactions as you can see here on the bottom with the overall transactions. So therefore, even other people are simulating this and proving concepts to a certain degree. With the eight blocks per second shown here, that equates to 1,600 transactions per second, which is very close to the visa number we discussed earlier. Now there is one more tweet from Michael, which is the reason I'm making this video. That's because he announced that all major components are completed. This includes the mempool, script engine, P2P infrastructure, RPC infrastructure, pruning related components, and more. The core consensus validation engine was completed long ago. This means that we are very close to this change happening, and it could be massive for Casper coin in terms of development and crypto mining. It would allow for us to have more blocks to mine, which means that we can also solo mine on GPUs that are older and have less hash rate. For example, I can mine one block solo in around five days on a 4090. If we had 10 blocks per second, it would divide this number by 10. So in theory, I could solo mine one block every 12 hours. Of course, there would be less reward, but the ability to solo mine is great for decentralization. So realistically, we should be seeing this Casper on Rust very soon. Now I have talked about transactions and block times, so let's note some other main goals for Rust rewrite. Firstly, it will improve efficiency and performance overall. The Rust programming language has the right balance for writing a system like Caspad, with low level memory management on one hand and large and mature crypto rust ecosystem. This ties in with being more simplified and modularized code base. Rewriting this will make the code base more approachable for newcomers. My feeling is that the core of the current Casperpad code base is hard to figure out for newcomers and it's a bit complicated. Up until now, all code contributions to the Caspad for non-core members are still in the external realms of the code base. This means that the Casper network will have a lower barrier of entry for people to develop on the network and create things which will further the growth and price of the coin. Now, when it comes to Casper mining, it's still one of the most profitable coins right now, but coins like Nexa, Dynex, and Radiant take the top spot, but it's still a viable coin to mine. The rush change could allow it to take the top spot if we've seen more price movement due to this change. Right now, Casper sits at 0.008 cents per coin, and is ranked around 250 by market cap. I think it could break into the top 200 and a price of one cent soon enough. So keep mining and wait for this update because it's gonna be big for this coin. If you have any more questions about this rewrite, then leave them in the comments below and subscribe for more Casper content.